So you're telling me that this keyboard has over 30,000 reviews on Amazon, is only $35, and has actual mechanical switches? And no, none of that mechanical feeling gross switch is actually pure mechanical. This is the Red Dragon K552. Hey guys, I'm Betty, and this is Switch and Click. Today we've got the most popular keyboard on Amazon, the Red Dragon K552 Kumara. We're going to do the unboxing first and then fast forward a few weeks to the full review. Let's go. We've got the K552 Kumara right here, as you can see. Let's open this bad boy up. Pretty cool, eh? Close that before I cut myself. And then here we go. Here is the box. We've got cables as well. And of course, got all this bubble wrap. You know what? Very cool, very protected. Take a look at that pretty soon. Got a plastic keycap puller. Honestly, not a huge fan. Prefer them to be like this. Just won't scratch up your keycaps. Definitely better with this version here, but toss that aside. Got a Red Dragon sticker and a manual. Overall, the design is not too bad. It's just this huge logo that, you know, I don't want everyone to know that I own a Red Dragon keyboard. The case itself does feel pretty hefty. A non-detachable cable, but at least you've got this protection right here so that your cable won't just break off if you handle it too difficultly. Looks like on the back, despite being a budget keyboard, we do have two feet. And then you have two rubber feet there. I mean, we'll see how it slides. Mm, a little bit of sliding here and there. Not too bad. No flex though. This thing is solid. So we do have ABS double shot keycaps. They're very thick. Honestly, I'm surprised at how thick they are. The font is okay. It's not amazing for a gaming keyboard you know this could this could look pretty decent now we will be replacing these keycaps with some hyperx pudding keycaps by the end so make sure you stick till the end for that all right i'm gonna test this out for a few weeks i'll get back to you and i'll see you for the full in-depth review all right now that we've gotten a few weeks to test out this 35 dollars keyboard i use this pretty heavily for everything and at times I forgot it was even only a $35 keyboard. The 10 keyless size is really nice and compact. On Amazon, it does say it's 60%, but that's not true at all. A 60% is much smaller than this. And someone needs to fire that employee right away. Just kidding, don't, don't actually do that. But this is 10 keyless, not 60%. Now the 10 keyless size is great for gaming and it saves so much more space than a full size keyboard. Chopping off that number pad on the right side gives you way more mouse room. The only downside to this keyboard is you can't get dedicated media keys, but you can change them through a combination of keys. It's nice to have that, but having dedicated sound controls would have been a huge game changer. But oh well, the keyboard comes with some intense branding here on the front. I'm definitely not a huge fan of it and not everyone needs to know that I'm using a Red Dragon budget mechanical keyboard. But the red does go well with the black if you're into that. Next to the branding here, there are two indicators for caps lock and scroll lock. The keys themselves are lower than the edge of the case, which means dust won't get in there as easily, which means you don't have to clean your keyboard as often. Not to mention, the keyboard also is spill resistant, so if you're drinking juice or soda, you don't have to worry about your keyboard breaking if there's an accidental spill. Now, the case itself is surprisingly strong. Now, the outside is pretty much all plastic, but on the inside, there is a metal plate keeping the board from flexing, from creaking. This thing is solid. This keyboard is quite a tank. It comes in at 880 grams or 1.9 pounds. There there are kickstands on the back if you like a higher typing angle, and they make a satisfying click when you open them. There are two dedicated rubber feet on the back with 
two sort of peripheral rubber feet on the kickstands and it does move around quite a bit upon those intense gaming sessions, especially when you're button mashing. The K552 comes in either red switches or blue switches. We opted for the red switches. They're great for gaming and chatting with your friends without bothering them through their headphones. Another pro of the red switch is that they're relatively lighter to press. Playing games like World of Warcraft and Valheim Holding down keys to walk a long distance gets fatiguing quite easily and red switches are much easier on the fingers for that. On the other hand, the Otomu blue switch is a clicky and tactile switch. On each keystroke, there is a loud click. If you're chatting with friends while gaming, they'll definitely hear you type. And if you're gaming late at night, you'll pretty much keep everyone else awake. Here's a quick comparison between red and blue switches so that you can hear the difference between them. You know all of the mechanical keyboards that you can find at Best Buy or at the local tech store? They all come with Cherry MX switches. Otomu switches are basically a Cherry knockoff, so you can't expect the same quality standards, but they still offer a lot of value for their price. Most budget mechanical keyboards on Amazon will come with Otomu switches or will say something such as Cherry MX switch equivalent. Tend to be less precisely made and between each switch, you can feel a little bit of inconsistency. But if you're totally brand new to mechanical keyboards, it'll be really tough to tell the difference. For a first mechanical keyboard, Otomu switches are a perfectly valid option. Don't let anyone switch shame you. Now the K552 does have anti-ghosting and end key rollover, so it's great for gaming. You can press pretty much all the keys at once and your computer is going to register all those keys. The K552 does allow you to switch out and replace these switches in here, which makes it hot swappable. So if you order the red switch in your keyboard and you find out you don't like the way that it feels, you can pull them out one by one and switch it out with something new like a clicky switch, for example. However, Cherry MX switches and other MX switches won't be able to fit into this board. This board fits Otomu switches only. I'll link down below to a few places where you can find Otomu switches if you do want to test out the wide variety of types. Now a keyboard where you can replace the switches like this is huge. It allows you so much freedom. You get to play and experiment with the different switch types, see which ones you like, and then dedicate yourselves to those rather than just being stuck and then having to buy a new keyboard. Now, if you really wanna go crazy, this feature lets you take apart your keyboard, perform mods to make it sound and feel way better. If you want me to make a video on the K552 mods, smash that thumbs up button and we'll make this even more amazing and we'll show you how we did it, just like we did with the GK61. The K552 comes with traditional gamer style keycaps. The font is quite intense. The keycaps here have a matte texture on top, which is great from preventing your fingers from sliding around, but it's also great for resisting shine and oil over time as you heavily use your keyboard. Now, they are made from a cheap plastic material called ABS, which is more likely to accumulate that shine that you see on keyboards. So we do recommend switching out these keycaps if you have the budget and the time for it. The K552 is completely compatible with Windows and Windows 10. As you can see from the legends or the symbols of the keyboard, there is a lot of lower level functionality, which is a little bit daunting. We'll put up on the screen right now to see everything that you can do with these lower levels. Now, all of those are super convenient and nice to have. However, like I said before, having dedicated media keys would have been a huge bonus. Now, a really nice upgrade that you can make to this keyboard is to replace 
place these keycaps to really take advantage of that RGB. The RGB shines quite nicely through the sides of the keycaps and the tops of these keycaps have a better material known as PBT that is more resistant to shine. Embrace your inner gamer. As for typing experience, the K552 offers a relatively good experience. Now there is a little bit of spring ping, but over time, I expect that to go away as I wear the keyboard in. Now under the larger keys such as backspace, enter, shift, and space, there are these things called stabilizers, prevent the keys from rattling and shaking when you're pressing them down. And the quality of stabilizers really impact the overall feel of a keyboard. The stabilizers on the K552 are all pretty decent, but that space work does have a little bit of rattle and shaking when you're moving the keycap around. And you'll hear that in the sound test later. This definitely could be improved by Red Dragon. The RGB on the K552 is a big selling point and it does not under deliver. Now, before we jump into the different RGB settings, it's really important to know exactly which version of the K552 that you have because there are several. So there's three basic options. Option one is the K552 Rainbow, which is the version that we have. And on this version, each individual row of the keyboard has a different LED color. So if you want to change this purple on the bottom, you can't. You can get the rainbow version in black or white cases, but the white one will reflect the RGB a lot better as it's very radiant. Now the second version of the K552 is the per key RGB edition. Now on that edition, each key can be all the different colors. You're not limited to that row. This also comes in either a black or white case. Now the third option of the K552 is the mouse and keyboard combo. This one also has per key lighting, but it, it comes with a mouse and it's only available with the black case. The RGB is a little complex, but with only the rainbow edition that does get more simple. So here's what we can do. We can switch between the basic RGB effects using FN and insert. We can switch between different gaming preset lighting effects using FN and one through eight. And then we have two profiles that we can edit on the keyboard itself to our, our own specific preferences. And another thing you can change the brightness by pressing FN or W and S for up and down. You can also create two personal profiles if you need specific keys illuminated for specific games that you're playing. And these are saved on FN nine and zero. Afterwards, you press FN and home to pretty much record the keys that you want illuminated. After that, press FN and end or the S in the sub legend for that, which pretty much saves the profile. And then boom, you got it. You got your own profile. Now to turn it on, you press FN and nine or FN and zero, depending on which one you want to use. It's that easy. Now, if you don't play that game anymore and you need to delete that profile, press FN and page up. Now I did do a lot of research looking for the software and after browsing a ton of forums and reading comments, it seems like the software just doesn't work properly, but that's okay because the firmware on the keyboard is pretty much all you need to get it working. Now, if you are looking for a keyboard with strong software features, I recommend you look elsewhere instead of the K552. Now the power cable on this keyboard is quite a beefy boy. It's non-detachable, but it does have this protection right here to keep it from just snapping off of your board. Downside to this is if the cable breaks, well, your board's pretty much done for, but it seems to be quite durable for the long term. It limits mobility quite a bit. If you want to go somewhere, you have to take that cable with you. Now the USB head is gold plated, which makes it a little bit fancier for a $35 keyboard. However, a detachable power cable is pretty much always the preferred way to go. Now the K552 has no wireless connectivity, wired only. And the keyboard also doesn't have USB pass-through, so only one USB port is required on your computer. The polling rate is 1000 Hertz, which is great for that fast response time for gaming. 
If you're on a budget and you need a mechanical keyboard, this is pretty much the best option out there. No doubt about it. I honestly can't think of another mechanical keyboard at this price that offers anything better. For $35, you get a decent keyboard. It's pretty sturdy and durable with a ton of different RGB options. You get switches that you can remove and replace and lots of functionality. If you're gaming, the K552 is basically the best value on the market, hands down. And don't just take it from me. There have been over 30,000 reviews on the K552 on Amazon. Now that's a ton of reviews. Now based on those reviews, yes, a lot of people do have some problems with keys breaking after a few months or the keyboard not being able to connect after a few months. So we will be doing a long term review on this board, putting it to heavy, heavy, heavy use and getting back to you a few months later to see what we find out. If you're interested in buying the K552, check out the genius link down below. It does localize to your country. We'll link you to each individual version. So if you want the per key one, that's there for you. If you want the rainbow one, that's there for you. It's all there for you. It's all there for you. And we'll see you in the next one or not or not. You can just leave. Just go, just go, it's fine, it's fine.